guys, welcome back to another Marvel Legends Mystery Box. If this is your first time here, where have you been? You've got a lot of catching up to do. But the basic idea is this is a box full of action figures. I think these are Marvel Legends three and three quarter inch figures. I haven't gone through them in a while. They've been in storage. We crack it open, take a look at the figures, talk about the history behind them, and see what we can find. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh yeah. Okay, so this is another packed in box of the Marvel Legends three and three quarter figures. And right here off the top, we have got the the team of the 80s, Power Man and Iron Fist. Now, we did get this Iron Fist in, well, we got both of these in the Marvel six inch line, but they really did do them nicely in this line. And they look so good and they look so good together. They just, they just scream 70s, 80s. I love those figures. They did a lot of figures for the Iron Man movie, and this is obviously the, you know, cave armor, the one that Tony Stark made uh, when he was, you know, with the very first Iron Man armor. And, I mean, that's pretty nice. Look at, look at the level of detail that they put into, you know, this, this figure that's, you know, the same size as a Star Wars figure, essentially. It's a little bit taller, but that's really good. Okay, so I put this box together last spring break when I was cleaning up around the house. And so basically everything that was this size got thrown into these boxes. This is a Hawkman guy. This is actually the second one of these boxes that we've gone through. Uh, you can see a link to the other one over here. It actually takes a couple of videos to go through these because they're so densely packed. You know, so here's DC's Lex Luthor hiding out, hiding out in that box. We've seen this one before, but holy cow, that's the Steve Ditko Iron Man. Again, for those not familiar, Steve Ditko did like a seven-issue run on Iron Man, but he took him from the all-gold, giant, bulky metallic suit to the red and gold armor that we are all familiar with. And you can always tell a Ditko Iron Man because it's got the, uh, the, spiky, the spiky head there. Ah, yes, so the Thor movie, the original Thor movie, did not get six inch action figures, but they did get some sweet figures in this line. So this is one of the Warriors three. We're gonna put him over there. Oh, you know, if you remember from our last movie or our last box of these, we found Dagger. So thankfully here's the cloak that goes with her. Good, we'll have to get those two back together. Yep, Hawkman, he flies in a circle because he only has one wing. Uh, and that does look like it's actually broken. Uh, that's too bad. We'll have to see if we can fix that. Oh, that's uh, uh, Indiana Jones' dad. <laughs> this is Sean Connery uh, playing uh, Indiana Jones' father. They actually made some really decent uh, Indiana Jones figures when that god-awful last Indiana Jones movie came out. But they went back and made figures from all the previous movies. So that was that was pretty cool. Okay, I think that's Vandal Savage. I want to say that's who that is. This is from, like, the Young Justice line. I do know who this is. Let's see how angry that Punisher is. Pretty angry. Looking to do some punishing. It's a nice classic Punisher figure. Definitely has the kind of, with the white boots and the white gloves, this is like that Ramita Sr., like, original Punisher design. I like that. Now, here is where I think, uh, along with the movie figures, but here's Triton from the Inhumans. Now, we have not seen this guy in action figure form since, like, the 5-inch Fantastic Four line back in the 90s. And that's kind of ridiculous. Like, we absolutely need more Inhuman figures. And here's one of the Inhuman royal family to go, go right in our collection. Solid. Uh, Hulk, is this is, like, Oh, it's like Planet Hulk kind of, you know, letting his COVID hair grow out Hulk. I'm not sure. Madrox, multiple man. Nice figure. Yeah, see, okay, so obviously I think most of the DC ones have found their way into uh, this box, but that's a very sweet Dr. Fate. There is something so delicious about Dr. Fate's yellow and blue, just how good that goes together. And here is Black Hand. Uh, from the absolutely fantastic Blackest Night storyline by Jeff Johns in the Green Lantern books. If you haven't read it, I definitely recommend that you, you pick that up. It is, it is really spectacular. Oh, and let's keep jumping around toy lines. That appears to be a Cobra emblem. So this is like a diver Cobra person. 
Oh, that's cool. We'll see where that goes. Here we go. Here we go. Looky there, man. See, this is this is the potential that this line had. And, and I hate that it ended. You know, this line really picked up while the six inch Marvel Legends were on hiatus. And Hasbro really ran with this for a number of years. And they did great, but it just kind of it sort of ended. Now we're gonna get into some Spidey villains. Oh yeah. I mean, this thing's heavy. You know, for a for a three and three-quarter inch action figure, it's got some heft to it. Lots of detail. I love that eye on the rhino head. Very strong. And while we're looking at Spidey stuff, again, I talk about how it took us years to get a good Mysterio. Actually, we didn't get a good Mysterio until this past year when we got one in the retro card back line. But this is the Mysterio that we were waiting for all along with the clear pearlescent head. Look at how the light shines off of that. Yeah, oh, that is nice. Classic Mysterio. And let's see how Goblin looks to go with him. Pretty good. Little, little crazy on the eyes. Was that Marty Feldman, the actor that had the eyes going in different directions? Anyway. Ah, here we go. More. Craven. You can put together, I'm, I, well, Rhino wasn't in the Sinister Six, but I'm, I'm putting together a pretty quick Sinister Six here. Uh, of course, Green Goblin wasn't in the Sinister Six either, so maybe I don't really know my comic history as well as I thought I did. I know who this guy is. This is the one-handed Iron Man. That's another movie figure, obviously. Uh, more DC action with, I think, one of Hawk Girl's minions. Speaking of minions, there's an AIM trooper. Need to army build with that. Again, a figure that it took us forever to get right in Six Inch Marvel Legends, but here is a really nice Jim Lee era Jean Grey figure. Pretty cool. Doc Samson. Uh, yeah, I can't remember if there's been a... I know that we've gotten a Doc Samson in the Six Inch line. There was like that... that I think he came in the Thing Fang Foom Build-A-Figure wave, but that looks good. Green hair, everything. Cool. All right. Captain Marvel or Shazam, depending on whose rights you want to pay. Oh, yeah. Look at this. So this may... Let's see. Is this utilizing the same body as the Rhino? It is. It is. So cool use of this frame. And it works. It totally works for Abomination as well. And they also give us that phenomenal Abomination head sculpt. I would dare say that's better than any of the Build-A-Figure giant Abominations that we've gotten. Namor. I'm not sure if this is like, like old age Namor. What's going on with the streaks up in his hair? But he's got his little winglets. It's a good classic Namor. All right. No, this dude. So we've seen the green version of this. So here's your kind of first appearance, early Hulk gray version. Oh, oh, okay. All right. So this is super fun. I think I pulled a cape out a little while ago too. All right, we'll throw a cape on him. Yes. Okay, so this is Thor, except it's not. This is Clore, or the clone Thor. So when Marvel had one of their giant company-wide crossovers, Secret Invasion, which, get ready, it's coming to Disney+, Plus and is probably going to be a huge part of the Skrull storyline in the movies uh, coming up. They had this giant thing, Secret Invasion, where the Skrulls had taken the place of numerous Marvel heroes and kind of infiltrated everything. Well, you know, it's a company-wide crossover, so you want all your big guns in there. But at the time, in Thor's own book, he had just had like a Ragnarok, and he was actually kind of out of the Marvel Universe at that time. So Tony Stark made a clone of Thor. And you can see here's that robotic kind of clone stuff. And this clone of Thor kind of went off script and threw his clone hammer through Bill Foster Giant Man, killing him. It was a really pivotal moment in the Secret Invasion storyline, and it caused, was it Secret Invasion? Or was it, no, or was it, it was Civil War. I keep, okay, let's start over. This is the Clore from Civil War. When he killed Bill Foster, it caused a bunch of the Marvel heroes to switch sides, uh, including the pivotal Marvel hero, Spider-Man. So, that's a huge piece of Marvel history and only available in this form. Sorry I screwed the stories up. You get one Bendis mega story combined with the other. 
I'm surprised I didn't throw House of M in there at some point as well. Lots of Iron Men. Uh, I don't know if that's meant to be like a original X-Men or not. Hey, here we go. One of DC's big three. Actually, a pretty cool figure. Um, that's a pretty cool figure, Wonder Woman. I always love the thing. And this is the John Byrne era of the thing because instead of the black belt and, and blue pants, he's got the blackish pants with the white belt. Yep, cool. We talked about him before. Apparently, I have two of him. Uh, Absorbent Man. He has touched some steel because he's all steel looking there. Here's Falcon. Actually, I think that red wing we saw goes with, with this Falcon. This is the modern version of Falcon because he's not showing us his chest hair. All right, we got one of the wrecking crew here. I think it's Thunderball. If I'm wrong, you can get a fun fact point by telling me that I'm wrong. Kind of got that mission team Wolverine. Got some claws going there. All right. Okay, so very nice Winter Soldier. So this is like a bad guy Winter Soldier because he has his, his red star. So this is meant to represent Bucky during his Winter Soldier phase. Okay, um, I guess this is Magneto when he went to the Levi's outlet and said, I'll take all the denim that you have. I like those button flies because they're made out of metal. Oh, yay, here's one of everybody's least favorite heroes, Sentry. So, I don't even want to talk about Sentry. I just want to make fun of him. But it's a pretty cool belt, you know, he's got his sweeping hair because... Superman. Okay. Yondu. All right. Another figure that we haven't gotten in six-inch scale. So, obviously, well, we have from the movies, of course. We've gotten movie Yondus, but not an MCU Yondu. So, big need there. We definitely want to see that guy. Oh, look. Spider-Man still sucks. Okay. So, here we go. This is your flagship. This is everything that you have based your entire Marvel Universe on, you're like, yeah, let's make another Spider-Man figure. Great. How about we make sure that the the head and mask doesn't match the rest of the body? Let's, let's just throw that out there and see if the kids will buy that. Because, of course they did. Ugh. All right, Superman. That's kind of a... It's okay. It's kind of a doofy-looking Superman. I mean, that was kind of a Happy Meal toy more than it does anything. Ooh, look who I see. I don't know why he's got... Rubber on him. I love me some Beta Ray Bill. Oh, that is so good. Hopefully his Stormbreaker is down in the box somewhere, but Beta Ray Bill proved his worth. He was defending his people and got into a battle with Thor, obviously the classic hero miscommunication deal. And during the battle, at the time, if Thor was without his hammer, if he hadn't touched his hammer for like a minute or whatever, he would revert back to Donald Blake and the, the Molnir would revert back to a cane. Well, Beta Ray Bill picked up the cane and because he is worthy, he gained the powers of Thor and became this absolutely phenomenal creature. So Odin pretty much had to come up with a compromise and so he gave Thor back Molnir and he made Stormbreaker for Beta Ray Bill, and they have been great allies ever since. Great character. Walt Simonson creation from the early 80s. Bullseye. He's a big boy. Different mold, though. That's a, that's a different chess piece for this giant figure of Juggernaut. Solid. Yeah, so a more kind of modern version of Iron Fist. That's a good figure. I mean, look look at how nicely painted that symbol is on his chest. I mean, that's that's really good. I, I don't have any comics from this era of Iron Fist, but I can definitely appreciate how nice that is as a figure. Yeah, we're gonna there's gonna be a ton of these. They, they, they made so many movie Iron Man figures. Oh, looky here. Oh, this is great. So grabbing the Wayback Machine. This is a Kenner Superpowers Flash. So you're talking about a figure from 84, 85, you know, somewhere in that time frame. Uh, he should have a, let's see if he'll, well, he's supposed to, if you squeeze his arms, his legs will run. Each one of the Superpowers figures 
had a superpower, but what a nice figure. That is such a great line. I do have the complete line on display down in the Secret Lounge. I never had these as a kid, so I'm not exactly sure where I picked this up. Obviously, some kid really loved it, which is great because this is a toy. It's meant to be played with, and it certainly looks like this Flash got played with, which is awesome. Very awesome. Uh, I actually think that this is the Baroness uh, because, you know, no one else in their scuba gear would wear their glasses underneath their goggles. So we got a G.I. Joe Baroness hanging out there. Oh, nice. Now, did Wolverine have long hair in the Weapon X stuff? I don't, I don't remember if he did. But anyway, this is a Weapon X Wolverine from the Marvel Comics Presents storyline. Marvel Comics Presents was a yeah, fairly short run weekly comic that Marvel put out in the 80s. And Barry Windsor Smith did this tremendous like horror story of Wolverine's origin at the time, or at least, you know, how he went from being Logan to getting his adamantium and becoming Wolverine. And it was uh, Weapon X. And so this is the, the Weapon X version. I'm extremely frightened by those metal nipple things that we may never see that again. That's, that's not good. Does anyone need a, uh, Ed McGinnis Hulk? I apparently bought every single one that they, they had. Oh, Starfire. So new, T new Teen Titans Starfire. Probably her head was just so gigantic with hair all the way down to here that it broke off. Maybe we can find it in the box somewhere. Okay. So I actually really loved this era of Iron Man. I was a, I was a big fan. I, you know, I'm buying comics at my local, you know, convenience store. It was called the Garden Spot in Taylor's, South Carolina. And I would pick up every issue of Iron Man during this era. This is called like the modular. Well, yeah, I think this is still considered the modular armor. I always like that cut out back there. I don't know why, just artistically. It doesn't look quite as good in 3D form as it did on the comic page, but I'm a huge fan of this era of Iron Man. Some really great stories came from, from that time frame. Okay, here's Cable. Oh, yeah, okay. So I did find, so this is the Cable that came with little baby Hope Summers. And you can see there's a spot for her to get attached to the front of, of his strappy 90s things. Uh, so there's a little, little, little baby girl in, in like, ba basically this cable came with a baby Bjorn. Uh, it came with a baby Bjorn to carry Hope Summers around. I'm 99% certain I saw that Hope Summers in the other box of these figures. So we'll have to find him another leg and reunite them to get them together. Okay. Vault Guardsman. We got this guy coming. Uh, he's in the upcoming 2021 Iron Man wave. So we're finally getting a decent version of, of this dude. I don't think we had seen him since Toy Biz's five inch series back in the back in the 90s. Let's take a look at a couple of more. Okay. Oh, you guys may not recognize this because this movie sucked so bad. But this is a Green Lantern movie, Sinestro. Normally I say, oh yeah, when you finish this video, go out and watch blah, blah, blah. Don't watch this. This movie was, it just wasn't good, which is shocking because Jeff Johns, who was writing some of the best, or actually the best Green Lantern stories of all time, was an executive producer. They had Ryan Reynolds. You know, why? Why did this movie just absolutely blow? But it did. It, it completely did. Wolverine has a gun strapped to his you know, wrist, because it's not enough to have three adamantium claws coming out of your wrist. You also need an assault rifle with what looks like, you know, like a grenade launcher on it. I mean, that's not overkill. That, that makes, that makes good sense. Okay. Half the time I pull these capes out and I'm like, I don't know who that goes to. I know who this goes to. That is clearly Mr. Sinister's cape. Uh, there are very few people that have the same fashion sense as Mr. Sinister. Well, um, I think we saw him in the last box because I made fun of his black lipstick. So why not also make fun of that cape? Mark Silvestri, if you're watching this, good job, dude. I No one would have thought of 
this design, holy cow. All right, let's end on this one because this is such a cool figure. So this is the original Captain Britain. So Marvel was trying to kind of open up the UK to comics. And so they were, they were basically publishing reprint uh, editions over there. But, you know, come on. You know, they, I mean, the reprints were great, but, but they wanted to create a, a character for England, for the UK. And they came up with this Captain Britain design. And even though his more classic design is certainly more well-known with the white, blue, and red, there is just something super, super cool about this. So he has his amulet around his neck that gives him his power. He has the giant lion crest, which is really nicely done across his front. And then look, he's got the Union Jack on his wrists and across his forehead. And again, these are three and three quarter inch figures. That is some pretty sweet paint applications to put on such small figures. So that is really terrific. And uh, I'm pretty sure this is what he looked like when uh, I first, first introduced the character in Marvel Team Up against Spider-Man. So that's nice. That's a good figure. So we're going to take a pause here. You can see how thick this box is. We're about halfway through. Come back next week. We're going to go back through the rest of this box. And I'll see you then. If you haven't, subscribe to Carbon Scoring. Share with your friends. Tell all your buddies. We're trying to grow on the internet. See you next week.